Good evening, everyone. I am back with another video, this time talking about a fairly recent, probably by the time I upload this, just came out yesterday, uh, movie that I just went and saw. And, uh, let me just throw a couple caveats here. I do not personally feel qualified to judge this film in the slightest. And I cannot wait to see the discourse online about how I am just too dumb to get it, that it's a brilliant masterpiece, thoughtful and intellectual and whatever else, and how it's the best thing DC's ever made. With that said, I have some thoughts about Joker Foley Adwa. I think I pronounced that pronounced that pronounced that correctly. But, you know, I'm not French, so I don't know. This video is going to cover spoilers. For the most part, <clears throat> I generally found the film to be Let's start with the positives. Joaquin Phoenix's performance as Arthur Fleck, still as good as the original. The film looked great. Like, visually, it looked great. Story-wise, there were good moments. And then there's decisions that I highly question. I question a lot. Um, overall, I, I'm, I'm a played straight. I, I did not like this film at all. My girlfriend said it's good enough for background noise. And my response was, I can think of better background noise. <laughs> Again, feel free to pepper me in the comments with how wrong I am. With that out of the way, let's now get into spoiler stuff. And let's start with the other half of this movie. Okay, this is no shade at Lady Gaga. No shade at her at all. But I don't know why Harley was even in this film. She does basically nothing. Like, she's there for, you know, the canon to Joker story crazy love interest. Although they turn it on its head a little bit here, instead of, you know, Joker using Harley's love to manipulate her, she... Harley kind of takes the fact that Arthur is a lonely bastard wanting co companionship and uses that against him. She might genuinely have had a thing for him. Probably did, but at the same time, like... I don't know, I just did not feel like... I don't feel like she added much to this movie. And again, that's no shade on Lady Gaga. That's shade on, like, just the fact that she's kind of there to just be there. It, it, it feels like an obligatory, well, we're doing Joker, we gotta do Harley. Kind of like how, you know, current Batman films can't go one movie without mentioning the Joker. As much as I love Joker as a character kind of, he's kind of overplayed at this point. Like, Batman has other cool rogues. I do kind of feel like they went into this whole idea with we're gonna have this movie be partly a musical, and that's why they needed Lady Gaga, and who else could we have her play except Harley Quinn? 
Thanks for reminding me I need to turn my phone on silent. Which, the musical parts just felt so out of place. Like, the music's fine. Joaquin Phoenix, I know he did a film where he was Johnny Cash. Didn't see it. Um, but he's fine singing. Um, Gaga's fine. It just, it felt so weird. And, like, the musical bits don't really add anything. At least not in my opinion. Like, they're hallucinatory moments that Arthur's having. And before anyone wonders, they didn't pull the twist of the fake girlfriend. Like, Harley's 100% real in this film. And, and I'm just like... And there was a lot of musical moments. Like, seven or eight of them. And I mean, they were fine. I just, like... Th this film... I described that... I described Joker 1 when I would talk about it with my friends, and I described even this film as an anti-comic book film. Comic book film. Like, they do every... Like, Todd Phillips did everything in his power to create a comic book film or a film based on a comic book property that's not a comic book film. And honestly, if you... When I watched the first Joker film, about halfway through, I started to just think, don't look at this as a comic book movie. Just look at this as a movie about a guy going... And I liked it after that. As a Joker film, I don't like it at all. But as just a film about a guy going... It was fine. I, I really liked it. Not even that mindset saved this film for me. Or my girlfriend, for that matter. Like... I, I, I looked at her after the movie, and I'm just like, what the hell was that? Like... We, we have the joke We have Arthur's trial, which... That would have just been fine on its own. Then we have the really weirdly inserted romance between him and Harley, where Harley does weird shit to try and, you know, be like, y y you're not Ar Arthur, you're Joker, that's the real you, that's the you I want. And shit like that, and I, I'm just like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. This, this film did not work for me. There's a really cringy sex scene between Arthur and Lee. They don't call her Harley, or Harleen, but Lee. There's a really cringy sex scene between the two of them that goes on way longer than it should. I, I, I just, I didn't know what to make of this movie, y'all. And at one point I am like, I am not the person for this movie. Like, I, I can't even sit here and really think about, like, what they could have done different. Because this movie is in every way nothing that I would have wanted or expected or even done for a Joker film. And again, I can't wait to hear how I'm wrong. Like, how all my opinions are wrong. Uh, although, I do think if we want to try and somewhat tie this back to comic books, I think the ending kind of sets that up. And I did see online where the ending's kind of divisive so far. Like, there's some people that definitely think it's whack. And honestly, I'm kind of in that camp. So the ending of the film, major spoilers, but I already warned you about that. The ending of the film, Arthur is met up with another Arkham inmate who starts to tell him a joke. 
And then the inmate proceeds to stab him to death before sinking down to the floor laughing and then carving a smile into his face. And I guess the takeaway is that Arthur is the inspiration for probably a succession of Jokers that will one day become, that will one day lead into that universe's Batman's archenemy. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. A a anyway, I, I just... I didn't know what to make of this film, y'all. I, I really didn't. This is a... I, 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 I don't even in good conscience want to put this on my top ten for the year. Like, fucking... I... I I don't even know what's on my top 10 so far. Let me see if I can pull that up real quick. But, like, just overall, I'm just I'm just sitting here like, I, I didn't enjoy this. <laughs> like, this felt like a waste of two hours of my life <laughs> that I'm not going to get back. And like I said, again, I can't wait to hear how I'm wrong and how it's, you know, a masterpiece of writing or whatever else, because I remember there being that sort of split when, uh, the first Joker was released, how everybody said it was the greatest thing ever, and that it was gonna top Marvel, and, uh, I'm just sitting there like, did we watch the same movie? <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's not going on my top ten. And my number 10 at the moment is A Quiet Place, Day One. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing for this. <laughs> anyway, if y'all go watch it and enjoy it, number one, good for you. That, 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 that's awesome. I'm very happy for you. I wish I could be there with you and be like, yo, wasn't this freaking great? I, I wish I could be, but I'm not. <laughs> and uh, feel free to yell at me about how wrong I am. <laughs> and I I'll just be like, you know what? Solid. Cool. G glad you found something in it that I didn't. <laughs> anyway, I've rambled on way too much for this video. Y'all have a good one.